Egun hon guztioi eta eskarrik asko parte atzeagatik. Buenos días y bienvenidos a este virtual side event organizado por Bermeo Tuna World Capital. Os hablamos aquí desde Lisboa, donde se está celebrando la conferencia de los océanos organizada por la ONU. Good morning and welcome and thank you to join this virtual side event organized by Bermeo Tuna World Capital. First of all, we are very proud to be here. We are very proud to be selected by the United Nations for this 2022 OSEANS conference. That means that our matter is important. Only a few figures. Tuna is the basis for the economic development of more than 90 countries. Is 20% of the value of world fisheries and more than 8% of all seafood. This side event is one hour. In this one hour, we are going to listen to Mr. Josu Santiago, who is the head of Tuna Research Area in ASTI, who is going to speak about the global state of tuna fisheries. After, The delegates from Manta, Ecuador, Victoria, Seychelles, and Bermeo, cities in which tuna is a fundamental part of their economy, will share their perspective on sustainable management of tuna sector and the opportunities that the International Declaration of for Tuna Sustainability offers to contribute to a better competitiveness and sustainability with a strategy closely aligned with the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, of the United Nations, especially the 14. 14 says, conserving and using the oceans, seas, and marine resources in a sustainable way. Today, Our objective is to present the International Declaration for Tuna Sustainability, a global and collaborative alliance promoted by Tuna World Capital, brings together the world-leading tuna cities committed to sustainable tuna management and oceans sustainable development. We want to establish a framework for a collaborative between cities where tuna represent an essential part of their economy, social processes, history, and future projection to form an alliance of world tuna cities. Cities that pursue the, these objectives of contributing to the sustainable development of the oceans. We hope that during this hour, all of us are going to hear something new and after we are going to have more energy to defend the sustainability of the tuna and to build this important alliance. I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Josu Santiago, the head of the tuna research area of ASTI. Thank you, Josu. Thank you very much, Ignacio. It's my pleasure to be here in this important event. Um, well, I'm going to, to comment briefly on the global state of uh, tuna of tuna fisheries. This is going to be <clears throat> a summary, a summary of the state of these important uh, resources. Uh, when we speak about tunas, uh, well, there are several species, but we are going to concentrate into what is what are um, referred as a uh, major tunas eh? or in this case as you can see uh, we are dealing with seven tuna species in this figure you see five uh, fish by the way but the issue is that in the case of bluefin tuna we are dealing with three species and eh? the pacific bluefin tuna southern bluefin tuna and Atlantic uh, bluefin tuna. So in this case, we are dealing with three species. And then we have yellowfin, skipjack, big eye, and, and albacore. So 
in total, we are, as, uh, as the, the title refers, is we are dealing with seven tuna species. Um, on the left, those three correspond with, um, with the tropical tunas. And on the right, they are referred to as temperate tunas because of the, 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 the area in which they, they, they live, right? So tropical tunas in the, the tropical tuna region and temperate tunas in the temperate regions of the oceans. In terms of uh, catches, temperate tunas represent about 5% of the total catches worldwide. So 90% of the tuna catches in the world uh, are correspond to tropical tropical tunas. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority, 60%, and this refers to data of uh, 2020, 60% is skipjack, 27% uh, yellowfin, 7% big eye, and as I said before, less than 5% uh, albacore and bluefin tuna. Uh, bluefin tuna is uh, residual in terms of catches, but of course very important in term very important in, in terms of uh, of value mm -hmm. so this regarding the, the 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 species composition of the catches what about the the oceans eh? uh, nowadays almost 70 percent of the tuna catches come from the pacific ocean and just uh, about 21 percent from the indian ocean and 10 percent from the atlantic ocean mm -hmm. And regarding uh, gears, uh, the most important if, uh, is Pursain, hmm? followed by bait boat, long line, uh, gill net, lines, and other gears. Hmm? Uh, currently, almost 73% of the, of the tuna catches in the world uh, are, are captured uh, using Pursain. Pur hmm? And from this, uh, 62 percent well 32 percent of the of the total catches correspond to fat um, well to 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 percent using fats eh? that is about 50 percent of the percent is uh, is uh, well it's using using fats mm? fats is fish aggregated devices mm? uh, so we are dealing with seven species in total there are 23 stocks uh, worldwide, we'll see uh, later, mm -hmm. and those uh, stocks, uh, those important stocks, are managed by the tuna uh, regional fisheries management organizations. There are five uh, tuna RFMOs, mm -hmm. two in the Pacific Ocean, the IATTC and the WCPFC, one in the Atlantic, ICAT, one in the Indian Ocean, IOTC, and then um, well, a very particular uh, tuna RFMO is the CCSVT that only deals with one species, the southern bluefin tuna. Mm -hmm. uh, those um, tuna RFMOs have uh, scientific bodies that uh, conduct uh, regularly uh, stock assessment, evaluate the status of the of the of the stocks under their competence. And those um, scientific uh, bodies provide management advice, scientific advice to the to the managers. And those uh, tuna RFMOs, the different commissions, adopt manage, management measures following the, the scientific advice. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is a summary of the five uh, tuna RFMOs. As I said before, two in the Pacific Ocean, one in the Indian Ocean, one in the in the Atlantic and the CCSVT that is uh, transonal because it uh, is just dealing with one species in uh, in at least two different oceans. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, tuna RFMOs conduct uh, regularly the scientific bodies conduct uh, uh, stock assessment and they evaluate the status and just to summarize they provide advice. Um, incorporating the status in this diagram. This diagram is named the cover plot, and the cover plot has two axes. One, the horizontal axis, I would say, represent the abundance of the of the population. So, in the left, uh, few fish, and in the right is the you no know, the optimum 
the optimum side of the of this axis and the same with the vertical axis this corresponds to the to the effort to the physical mortality let's say to the physical mortality uh, uh, well exerted to this to the different populations no so the the upper in this <coughs> axis the the worse i would say mm -hmm. So the target of the different uh, tuna RFMOs is to bring populations to the to, to the optimum to the optimum um, uh, situation, eh? and this situation is is called is named the maximum sustainable yield. Mm? Um, so now I am going to summarize the status of the different stocks in different oceans, and following this cover plot we will categorize the status uh, using this, uh, these red lights, right? So in red is the, 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 you know, is, is the worst situation and the target is to be here in the center. And in, in, when we are in yellow, we are facing some problems that we have to, to solve in, in one axis. In this axis, the, the population is, well, uh, is undertaking overfishing and in this case, is the, the, the population is overfished, right? So now we are going to summarize the status of the different tuna stocks in the world using these red lights. Let's start with uh, Skipjack. So Skipjack, the status of these stocks worldwide is, is, is fine. Yeah? It's not overfished and it's not undergoing overfishing. In the case of uh, yellowfin, there is an issue in the Indian Ocean. In the Indian Ocean, yellowfin is, is overfished and, under, uh, and overfishing is undergoing. And, and IOTC is trying to, 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 to find no, solutions to this situation. And, and it's a long process, but, uh, well, um, it's expected to have um, measures, adequate measures in the, in the near future. Well, currently there are measures, but uh, well, this is also under discussion currently. Uh, regarding big eye, big eye in the in the Indian Ocean, in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, and also in the Atlantic, there is uh, well, the situation is in some cases is overfished, in other cases it's undergoing overfishing. So and 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 in, the, in those uh, different oceans, uh, measures are being taken. By the way, now, right now, there is a meeting of uh, panel one of uh, ICAT that is discussing, is discussing the measures to be adopted for the, the big eye stock in the, in the Atlantic. Let's continue. Albacore is uh, almost fine everywhere, except in the case of the, of the Indian Ocean, that the, the, um, there is, um, it's undergoing some overfishing in this case, and in the Mediterranean. In the Mediterranean, the stock is uh, is not uh, in a well situation. So, and, and and because of this, last year ICAT adopted uh, more strict uh, resolutions regarding this stock in the Mediterranean. And bluefin tuna, the the situation has improved dramatically in the Atlantic in both stocks. And, and there have been recently uh, different measures adopted in the in the Pacific regarding Pacific bluefin tuna, and the situation is reversing, uh, continuing red, but the situation is reversing. And in the in the case of the southern bluefin tuna, they adopted um, a, a, a management measure with a, a, a applying management strategy evaluation years ago, and the situation is again improving and is absolutely under control. So in summary, the number of tuna stocks, 65% of these stocks are in a um, healthy uh, situation, 22 in, in yellow, 13 in, in red. And if we consider instead of the number of stocks, then the, the amount of catches, we can conclude that 80, 86% of the tuna catches worldwide come from healthy stocks. That's important to emphasize. And just to, 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 to finish, just one, one concept, one in, important concept is the comparison between the current catches with this theoretical level of MSY, maximum sustainable yield. 
Currently, we are at 93% of the theoretical maximum level of catches. Yeah? So, and this is important to be to have in mind. Mm -hmm. And finally, three uh, take-home messages. Mm -hmm. First, tuna RFMO uh, management measures are in general working effectively. They are doing their job. Mm -hmm. Second, fishing is currently taking place at the levels, at the levels very close to MSY. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, global tuna catches are not expected to increase the current levels in the future. And this is all what I have. Thank you very much for your attention. A pleasure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yusu. Thank you always for your wise words. And now uh, we are glad to listen to different World Tuna cities representing, representing sharing their uh, point of view of the sustainability in the tuna sector. Uh, we have delegates from Manta, Victoria Cicels, and Bermeo. And now uh, I give the floor to Guillermo. He is the director at Tuna Conservation Group, Tunacons, and is also the delegate of Manta. Thank you, Guillermo, for coming. Buenos días. Eh, quisiera, en primer lugar, agradecer la invitación. I would like to thank the invitation to Bermeo to the world to participate at this event, parallel event, during the World Conference of the Oceans. My name is Guillermo Moran, director of the Foundation for the Sustainable Fishing. If Tuna, Tuna counts with headquarters in Ecuador during my presentation, I will tell you of our advancements as an organization implementing measures to reach sustainability of fishing in the EPO, as well as the importance of Manta as the tuna capital of Ecuador and the region. Let's first talk about the tuna industry in Ecuador. Tuna trade is oriented towards the international market and only about 20% of the sales are addressed to the Ecuadorian market. The tuna chain is the main activity of the fishing industrial activity in our country in catching, processing, and selling. We have the largest EPO tuna fleet with 107 personers recorded in the IATTC and it makes us the main tuna producer in this region. Yearly, we process in our country between 550 and 600,000 tons of tuna, which makes us the second world largest exporter. So, the tuna product represents the third non-oil export item with a year, yearly value of $1.3 billion. Now, let's talk about Manta, tuna capital of Ecuador and the Pacific. EPO. In this city, we have more than 15 industrial factories processing more than 300,000 tuna tons per year with the highest technology and quality in different products to turn them in different products and with added value. We estimate that in Mante, more than 30,000 direct and indirect jobs are generated, which makes this industry the main income of their economy and social development. 53% of employees in tuna processing plants are women. Moreover, Mante concentrates 60% of the tuna landings in Ecuador, and this represents approximately 40% of the interactive fleet landings operating in the Eastern South Pacific coming through the city. The value of tuna exports coming from Manda is 600 million years per million dollars per year. So what are we doing as tuna accounts for the sustainability of fisheries in the EPO? 
Our activities began as a fishing improvement project, FIP, to get the certification of the Marine Stewardship Council with the technical cooperation for the WWF, Ecuador. Now we are a foundation comprised by eight tuna companies with fleets with flags from Ecuador, Panama, and the U.S. Our ca target catches are skipjack, yellowfin, and big eye. Our first important activity is promoting the strengthening of tuna fishery management that in the EPO through tight scientific cooperation with the staff of the IATTC to support the improvement of tuna stock assessments and reduce ecosystem impacts. We have collaborated strongly with our Ministry of Production, Foreign Trade, Investment and Fisheries in the development of the National Tuna Fishery Plan and to improve on fishery management on FAT's fisheries. Our fleet carries out sets on free schools and FATs. FATs are fish aggregating devices placed at the sea as a support tool to get tuna and improve the efficiency of fishing operations. Regarding FATs, we have been working for five years to work on prototypes, the materials of which is fully biodegradable with the objective of helping reduce the marine pollution. We began last year with the commitment at Tinacons to replace 20% of total fats of the fleet that is part of our foundation. 100% ecological versions build on vegetable materials that are being monitored to improve on their res resistance at sea. We also collaborate with BIATTC in the implementation of a volunteer observer program on small vessels. So far, we have more than 8,000 days monitored and more than 40,000 data processed that are, are delivered to the IACCT scientific staff to improve their assessments. Another one of our most important pillars is providing continuous training to the crew in topics related to updating of conservation measures of the IATTC and the government of Ecuador, ECOFAD and non-entangling FADs, improving on the sensitive species releasing techniques, exchanging experiences of the crew in monitoring and technological changes activities. As part of our actions, we cooperate with other NGOs, such as Manta Trust, to analyze the survival of rays after them being released alive. One of the most recent projects we have in the implementation is the initiative taking care of Galapagos with three projects, collection of fats to avoid affecting island coastal areas, the support to seabed trash collection and the implementation of FIPs for artisan fishing fisheries in Galapagos. This is conjoint work with the artisanal and industrial fishing sectors. Here we can see recollection of fats. We see the collection process with the collaboration of artisanal fishes of Galapagos, which starts with search and rescue to sort later on the materials and recycle them. Tuna Khan's job is much more extensive. Time is short for us to tell you everything about it, but it wouldn't be possible with, without the collaboration of public and private companies that we collaborate with. As I was telling you, oh, we have wide work, but you can follow it step by step on our social networks in three languages, Spanish, English, and German. We thank Adenek for the information provided for this presentation 
and the Town Hall of Manta, with whom we are coordinating the process of addition of cities for the sustainability of Tuna, promoted by Vermeo Tuna World Capital. Thank you very much. I would like to see you online soon in our social networks. If you want, you can scan this QR code with the camera of your city, of your cell phones, where you will be able to see here. And here we see a crew member sending you his best regards. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. It's a pleasure to count on your participation in this side event in the framework of the United Nations Social Conference. Thank you. And now we are going to continue with uh, Philippe Michaud. He's the consultant of the Ministry of the Fisheries and Blue Economy of Seychelles, and he's the delegate of Victoria Seychelles for this event. Thank you, Philippe, for coming. I give you the floor. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you very much for having uh, invited me to this important event especially as Port Victoria is proud to consider itself as the tuna hub of the Indian Ocean. Sustainability is very crucial and essential for all of us who wants to maintain the tuna industry. I would like, if you don't mind, like to go back in time. The history and development of tuna fishing in Seychelles is an exciting success story between Spain and Seychelles, especially between Seychelles and Bermeo. It started in the 1980s. Seychelles became independent from Great Britain in 1976. The country had very little resources. Tourism was the main economic activity with some agriculture and fishing. We had, and we still have naturally, a large EZ of 1.36 million square kilometers. We knew we had fish, as fish was and still is our main source of protein, but we did not have a good idea of the extent of our tuna resources and how we could catch the tuna in the most efficient and economic way. We turned to France and in 1979, the first Poland Line vessel came. Three others arrived later. Live bait was a problem, and at the end of 1981, all the Poland Line vessels had left. A French purse sailor also came for some months, and trials were fairly successful. In June 1981, two Spanish Poland Line vessels arrived from the Basque Country again for an experimental campaign. This campaign proved that there was abundant tuna resources in Seychelles EZ. Nevertheless, it was found that Poland line fishing method was not adapted for the country. In 1983, we signed the first commercial fishing agreement with Spain. In April 1984, four Spanish Persinos came, and in December there were 13 Spanish Persinos. In 1984, we signed an agreement with the EU, and since then we have not looked back. This relation with the EU, especially France and Spain, has been growing and consolidating. For this to have happened, the tuna resources had to be sustainably manage. By the end of 1984, the port Victoria, the capital port, but well, the capital of Seychelles, was the most important tuna per sailing fishing port in the Indian Ocean. Today, we have 44 licensed per sailors operating from port Victoria. The biggest fleet is Spanish, with 15 per sinners, followed by 13 flagged and registered Seychelles vessels. Even though they are flagged, they are Spanish owned. Seychelles also licenses industrial tuna longliners, mostly from Asian countries. Unfortunately, 
these boats do not use much of the port facilities. This will have to change in the near future. The tuna vessels under license fish around 350,000 tons of tuna per year. More than 90% of the catch of these uh, ves uh, vessels goes through Port Victoria. An important amount, around 20%, goes to the tuna canning factory, which is a joint venture between Seychelles and the Thai Union Company. It is the single biggest employer in Seychelles and one of the biggest canning factories in the world. The tuna fishing industry supports the Seychelles economy, principally as a major source of foreign exchange earnings, employment, and for food security. When COVID struck and no tourists came to Seychelles, we had to depend entirely on the tuna industry to keep the economy afloat. More than 7,000 individuals depend on the industrial tuna fishery. This includes persons employed in fish processing, shore-based activities such as stevedoring, repairs, port services, ship channeling, etc. There are also inspectors, both at sh ashore and at sea, fishery scientists, and many are employed in various other related activities. A study recently carried out estimated that 20% of the GDP of Seychelles came from fisheries and fisheries related activities, making it the second pillar of the Seychelles economy, tourism being the first. More tuna services can still be developed and more tuna processing can be carried out so that nothing of the tuna is wasted. For this industry to continue, sustainability of the stocks is the key. Sustainability was, is, and has to be even more a priority in the future. The country worked hard to have the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission or IOTC's headquarters based in Seychelles. We need a strong regional management body to manage highly migratory stocks like tuna. Seychelles over the years has done its best to comply with the various IOTC management measures. This, these include the provision of detailed information on the catch, species, composition, location of vessels, bycatch, landings and transshipment. We have a team of observers who board the vessels and technicians ashore who monitor the landings. Over the years, there has been many management measures such as the reduction of fish aggregating devices or fads. Materials used for their construction are now more and more biodegradable and more work is being done. Recently, there has been quota limitations on the catch of yellowfin because the stock is over exploited. We have complied and reduced our catch. However, to properly manage the tuna, we need to get the full and active support of all IUTC member states. Seychelles is doing its best and hopes that others will do the same. Seychelles is not increasing its catch. In fact, it is decreasing it in line with the management measures. Our policy is to make the most of what is caught. It is encouraging to see that some Spanish companies 
are now pl planning to process in Seychelles some of what they catch here. Finally, I wish to say that we'll do all that we can to ensure that the industry which was developed four decades ago, ago grows through good governance and sustainable management. To conclude, I hope that the bonds between Port Victoria and Bear Mayo will continue to flourish in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Michon. Thank you for your involvement and collaboration. Interesting, from, interesting words from your city, Port, Port Victoria. Now is the turn of Vermeon, and we have here participating um, Maitane, the delegate of the local government board. Uh, Maitane, thank you for coming. Thank you for participating, and I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Leda. Eskerri uh, Casco. It's a big pleasure for me to participate in this forum. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And first of, first of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this forum representing the Bermeo City Council and also, as well, Bermeo Tuna World Capital Association. It's a great honor, Eskerri Casco. Uh, fish has always been a vital source of protein for humans. But the case of the tuna fisher sector deserves special attention. The human diet depends largely on fish. It is not only a source of protein, but also a source of economic activity and employment. Fisher tuna vessels were created as a result of a risky decision in the mid 20th century. Today, the sector constitutes an active and a dynamic industry with great investment capacity. The sector not only is a global activity actor at tropical tuna fishing, it, is, it also generates a great deal of economic activity at local, regional, national and international level. In 2019, Bermuda Tuna World Capital carried out the first global study on the economic impact of the value of chain of the tuna sector at the state level. The aim was to clearly see the real impact of the sector for the economic and the social development of our society. As you can see in the slide, the study addressed the entire uh, value chain from extraction, fishing, to consumption. But please, before continuing talking about the sector and the relevance of the tuna value chain, let me tell you a little bit about their meal. Bermuda is a small town in terms of size and population. 17,000 inhabitants in a territory of no more than 3,400 hectares. But as you can see, we have a notable weight of the primary sector, mainly fishing and canning industry in our gross aided value. Located in the Bay of Biscay, Bermuda has always been linked to the sea. Bermuda was the cradle of great navigators. In fact, it was the town in the Basque Country that contributed the most crew members to the Magilla and Elcano expedition. Specifically, seven men from Bermeo were on board. In addition, whaling, the important position of the inshore fishing fleet in the Bay of Biscay, and as well, the great adventures of Dakar, carved out not only the seafaring, but also the fishing identity of the people from Bermeo. So, we can say Bermeo is small, but has always had a well-known name in the Bay of Biscay and in the world. It has always been a benchmark. Nowadays, we know that due to the expected global population increase and the climate change, we will have to produce more food in the next, in the next 50 years than the amount needed in the last 500. In 2050, there may well be more plastic than fish in the oceans. Work per capita consumption of fish will increase per four, and it will be very difficult to meet the demand, given that most natural marine resources are at their maximum sustainable yield. Countries and private companies will face more policies for purchasing fertile land, as well as for fishing rights and access to natural resources in order to guarantee the supply of food and fish. Tuna is a natural and healthy, healthy source of protein. 
It is a staple in human nutrition, and we should, it should be protected for future generations. Because of that, and much more, it is fundamental to start a movement that promotes good practices regarding this scarce resource. In this context, Vermeil seeks to lead the movement to defend good practices and sustainability regarding the Turner sector. That's why we created Vermeil World Tuna Capital, it, which is an association that globally promotes sustainable management of tuna as a natural resource using scientific knowledge and good practices leadership. Tuna is the most important fishing resource in the world. And if it is not managed in a sustainable way, we run the risk that in the future, the demand for tuna will be very difficult to satisfy. This is a matter of concern for the different agents involved in the tuna value chain, from NASTI, the technology center, to the tuna fishing and canning companies, wholesalers, retailers, and also the public institutions. We therefore decided to join forces to highlight the value of this sector and, of course, promote the efforts that our fishing fleet is making to differentiate its activity both environmentally and socially. And of course, it, to focus it on Bermuda, as it has all the qualities to become the tuna capital of the world. But why do I say that? Well, first of all, due to our tradition and history, the Dakar campaigns that were carried out during the 1956 and the 1965, mainly by the Vermeo fleet, were a milestone in the tuna fishery. In 1961, Pevasa, the first tuna company that is still active today, was created. A few years later, in 1964, Echevastar and Grupo Coatumber emerged. These two large companies, family companies, constructed the first two sinners with built-in freezers, Alacran and Albonia. Those fishermen families from Bermeo were innovators. In second term, the tuna and canning sector from Bermeo has developed a social and economic impact at local, regional, national and international level. Through the high global potential of the fishing sector and the historical and cultural heritage of Bermeo, it is intended to consolidate the tuna sector as a fundamental engine of wealth generation. We are talking about a sector that today carries out the 10% of the world cultures of tropical tuna. The third reason is the fact that Bermeo is a global benchmark also in sustainable fishing. The Bermean fleet was a pioneer in promoting conservation measures which were later incorporated into future management measures by the different RFOs. In 2012, it established the code of good practices, which has become a reference. The objective is to reduce on desired impact of the tuna fishing activity, making fishing more sustainable. This code is reviewed annually and reflects the measures taken voluntarily by our fleet. Finally, Bermeo Tuna World Capital is really committed to science and sustainability. Nowadays, our fleet continues working and making progress in the development of these good practices for sustainable fishing. And for that, our companies collaborate with research bodies like ASTI, which, as you know, it's a leading scientific institute that is a global benchmark in tuna research. I am almost finishing. In this slide, you can see a few global data that reflect that Bermeo, in this case, as country, is particularly important in the tropical tuna fishing sector. In Spain, there are a total of 70 fishing vessels. The nine main companies in the sector are Basque, and most of them are from Bermeo. Specifically, the Basque country contributes, contributes 54, 54 tuna vessels to the Spanish fleet, and companies from Bermeo own 45 of those fishing vessels and also 27 support vessels and six cargo vessels. The fleet from Bermeo operates in the Indian, Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but our fleet is also present in inshore fishing with almost 28 inshore vessels. Our canning sector is world-renowned 
we have presence in global management bodies. Our shipyards are specialized in building research universals and the 95% of the design, engineering, constructions of tuna vessels are carried out in the Basque Country. These are the figures and so on. The turnover generated by the companies from Bermeo amounts to 1,550 million euros and they generate uh, more than 20,000 direct and indirect jobs. If we talk about <clears throat> local impact and sustainability, the creation of Bermeo Tuna World Capital will boost economic activity, resulting in job creation and improving the urban planning of Bermeo. We do really believe that it will help to improve quality tourism, service sector, and it also will help to create new business alternatives for the fishing sector. Furthermore, as World Capital, we aim to make Bermeo known worldwide for its tuna fleet as an example of good practice and sustainability. But last but not least, all this is about doing things right. This has to do with the future, with the planet. It is about environment, human rights and sustainable development. Because as Ralph Bignis said, sustainability is about ecology, economy and equity. From a town that loves the sea, that has lived, lives and hopes to continue living from the sea. A town placed in a unique natural environment in the world, surrounded by a natural biosphere reserve and protected by a, bio and a protected biotope, Urdaibai and Gastelugache. For us, being sustainable is part of our DNA. We cannot do things all the way, we don't know. That's the reason why Bermeo Tuna World Capital promotes the Declaration for Tuna Sustainability. Because if we don't take care of it, who will? Let's do it right. Let's do it in the best way. It's part of our values and our identity. That's how we understand fishing and life. From Bermeo, from the Basque Country, to the world. Let's make it sustainable. Let's make it well. Thank you very much, Esquerri Casco. Esquerri Casco, Maitane, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'm going to do my presentation. Okay, perfect. I'm going to try to go faster. Okay. What is Vermeo Tuna? I think that Maitane tell us what is this, but uh, Bermeo is a um, public and, and private uh, alliance to, to foster the sustainable management of the tuna knowledge and leadership of good practice, also a global level. Currently, we are seven, 37 members, uh, uh, also the public institution and different private company. Uh, our big objective uh, that we can see here is to promote a collaboration between science and fishing. Yesterday, we we, we were with uh, we were in a great meeting here in Lisbon with the Major of Bermeo, and all was uh, around the collaboration between science and politics. I think it's a very interesting this and promote collaboration between science and fishing is the the other the other pata of the, of the table and also to encourage the exchange uh, and of experience between culture uh, that this this meaning because what we are going to present today is the the, the declaration but uh, what we are looking is the this alliance between cities cities of different uh, part of the world we today we have uh, port victoria we have manta we have bermeo uh, one is uh, seven in the morning other is in the mid time and the other is in the night and this is that we we are looking for um, this is the main uh, of the objectives that we have in one moment, I know puedo pasar. Yes, 
Uh, we do some activities on circular economy project, also innovation, uh, study uh, studies sobre impact of the tuna sector and some local program. We have two big uh, future activities uh, that is Bermeo Tuna that the uh, lady is going to speak us in a few minutes. And also we have the and the Tuna International Center that we are going to we are going to create to do to come have a space to to meet and to share with the other. Will significantly increase and demand will be difficult to satisfy. Consequently, the raw material is. Food uh, will become more expensive, especially tuna, and uh, food as resource will become just a strategy, a strategy as energy fueling factors that represent a serious threat for the long term sustainability of the fishery sectors. What uh, Bermeo Tuna promotes is this international declaration agreement for the sustainability tuna, uh, as, as we know. Uh, is in line with the United Nations 2030 agenda, uh, is in line with the commitment of uh, the 13 sustainability, sustainable uh, development goals, especially the 14. Our objective is to comp uh, compile commitments shared by the different actors of a global level with uh, the ability to impact and socially and economically transform the entire tuna value chain to protect these value resources and their ecosystems. The final goal is to create a universal declaration is the sustainability tuna. Now I'm going to, to write the, all the commitments that this declaration is. It's a little boring, but I need, I think it's important to, to, re, to read all these uh, commitments. The first one, comprehensively addressed to sustainability, recognizing the environmental, social and economic characteristic of the fishery and the people involved in their management and exploitation. Promote social standard and the improvement of the labor rights of all people involved in the Tunia value chain, with a special attention to the fishermen and fisherwomen. Promote gender equality in all stages of the Tuna value chain, ensuring that women have access to equal working conditions as well as to decision-making space. Support small-scale and responsibly fishing communities promote the participation of local communities in decision-making space, the distribution of profits and respect for the local social cultural processes. Promote the nutritional value of tuna as healthy food source. Foster the consumption of responsibly and sustainably caught tuna. Implementing tools that will guarantee traceability of all commercial transactions, thus avoiding fraud and the entry of illegal fish into the commercial circuits. Foster the compulsoriness of reporting the origin of the fish on all products, above all on canned and frozen products. Efficiently regulate fishery management and exploitation and reject any fees resulting from illegal fishing practices, both in terms of environmental standard and social, cultural, and labor standards. Promote sustainability certification and good management and exploitation practice in the entire tuna value chain. Improve governance, 
system with efficient control and auditing measures that will consolidate the practice of sustainable fishing policy, facilitate and promote collaboration between scientific and fishing communities, cooperate to improve information and data to increase scientific knowledge, research capacity and technology transfer in maritime fishing matters, minimize negative impact on the environment and people throughout the entire tuna value chain. And the last, protect and preserve the marine environment and its living resource against pollution and environmental degradation. And the last one that I want to say that is the resume of that all that we speak uh, just now is today is the presentation of this agreement of the International Tuna Sustainability Declaration. That all the city are agree. All the people who are involved in tuna chain are agree with this presentation that we need for to arrive to the official declaration signature next year in the Bermeo Tuna Forum is to create and consolidate an alliance with all the big world tuna cities and other actors. Today we have here Port Victoria and uh, Bermeo, but we need to share this, to have more people who agree to join us and to do this official declaration signature. After this, the next step will be to, uh, to uh, achieve the universal declaration of sustainability of the tour. I think all the, all the city and all the people are agree with this, but we must go ahead. Permeo take today the, the flight uh, to, to, to lead this one. Permeo is not bigger than the others, but someone must lead if we want to be an official declaration and universal declaration. And we take this paper now, we, with this role, and I hope you are going to, to help us to, to achieve this. Okay, thank you very much. I give the floor to Lady, who is going to explain a little about tuna form. Hey, thank you. One minute. Okay, thank you, Ignacio. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lady Guillarte from Bermuda Tuna World Capital. And uh, I have just uh, five minutes to tell you why Bermuda Tuna Forum is going to be the most uh, amazing and relevant tuna event in 2023. Uh, I'm very happy for being here to tell you uh, and invite you to the most interesting, vital and greatest event of the tuna sector in the next year. Uh, yes, uh, I know that it may sound ambitious, and it is, as our name, Bermuda Tuna World Capital, is, and our goals suggest. Uh, okay. Um, sorry. Yes. How we will do it? By creating an incomparable framework for a very ambitious initiative whose aim is to transit borders and become a benchmark in the industry and promoting there the International Declaration Agreement for the Tuna Sustainability, as Ignacio said before. Uh, the event is called Permeo Tuna Forum and it will be the first international forum for debate and reflection on tuna sustainability organized by Permeo Tuna World Capital. In line, uh, sorry, Okay. In line with, with our main objective to promote the sustainable management of tuna through a public and private partnership, we have created different projects and actions that focus mainly on, some, on conserving and using the oceans, seas and marine resources in a sustainable way. But in addition, 
in order to work towards for the SDG 14, it is also necessary to align and focus our work on achieving other goals that should refer to decent work, responsible consumption and transparency, justice, and good governance of our seas and marine resources. As a framework of reference in the creation of scientific knowledge and presence in society of the association, Bermeo Tuna Forum will organize, uh, no, sorry, Bermeo Tuna World Capital will organize Bermeo Tuna Forum in the next year, in 2023. The first edition of this forum will focus on the importance and need to establish alliances for the sustainable management of tuna. It will bring together international players of the tuna value chain and this will have the capacity to impact and transform from, the, from a social and economic point of view. This will be the highest institutional representatives worldwide, as well as United Nations specialized agencies, scientific bodies, and European representatives from the fishery sector, among others. In addition, we will bring together representatives of the different cities that will form an international alliance of cities for tuna sustainability. These are cities whose main industry is tuna and which pursue the objective of contributing to sustainable tuna management and sustainable development of the oceans. Such as Bermeo, eh, Port Victoria and Manta, whose representatives are joining us in this virtual event. And what is the purpose of uh, this great event? The purpose is to align the fishing industry with 360 degrees of sustainability from a comprehensive perspective, economic, social, and environmental sustainability. And of course, to promote the signing of the International Tuna Sustainability Declaration Agreement among the highest representatives of the sector at a global level. Um, sorry, continue. Uh, the event will take place during the year 2023, and the date is not yet defined, but it will be in Bilbao and uh, with the permission and respect of the rest of the Tuna cities in our world Tuna capital, in Bermeo, in Vizcay, in the Basque Country, in, in Spain. And to conclude, uh, I would like to extend a massive invitation to all of you to keep an eye on our website and our social networks for news about the event. And of course, we extend as well as invitation to everyone to join the course and attend this meeting, which will be an important date in your agenda for 2023. Bermuda Tuna Forum will surely be of great relevance and transformative character for the global tuna fishing sector and the world tuna series. Finally, I would like to thank the conference secretary for allowing us to be part of the official program with this virtual side event. Also to MSC Spain, Laura, thank you for your help uh, organizing this. And to the rest of the audience, I really appreciate your time and hopefully see you all in Bermeo in 2023 for, for Bermeo Tuna Forum. Okay, thank you very much. And I give the floor for Ignacio again. Thank you. As you can see me, uh, I spoke about, about objective, and one of the objectives is to encourage the change of experience between culture and uh, countries. Okay, uh, I have now a scarf. The scarf is part of our culture. Our culture is sea, is hard work, but also is happiness and joy. I have this from Bermeo Tuna. And I hope in the Tuna Forum, we are going to have one of these to share with us the joy and the happiness also with the work and the sea. I am here with the Major of Bermeo, Aritza Baroa, who is going to say you some, some words. Thank you, Ignacio, and thanks to all the participants of this event. As Vice President of Bermeo Tuna World Capital and Mayor of Bermeo, it is, it is a real honor to participate in this site event and also in this international conference. I especially want to thank MSC for the facilities they have given us to organize this virtual meeting. So thank you very much for everybody. Okay, 
uh, only finish. I hope that after this hour, uh, as I told you, you are going to have more energy to boost, to join, to support this uh, international declaration of tuna sustainability and to build the big uh, alliance that we need of all the city. Thank you to all of you. Eh, muchas gracias. Escarecasco. See you soon. Escarecasco.